Hello and welcome to a new video about the magnetic field. Today we want to talk about ferromagnetic material. Last time we talked about material in the magnetic field and today we're talking about ferromagnetic material because it has some specialties. Well, let's have, let's zoom into a ferromagnetic material here that we are talking about this part now. Huh? Not this part, this would be the first stage of magnetism, but this part. This is the original status of our ferromagnetic material. All right. Inside we have so-called domains. Yeah? In German they are called Weißbezirke, because this was actually the discover of this. Weiss, Weiss was a, a, a physician, a French, French physician. Uh, and these are a so-called domains here. Magnetic domains. Inside a magnetic domain, there is maximum magnetized material inside there. Huh? So, and in which direction is now the question. Usually, our ferromagnetic materials are built with little crystals, and there are grain, crystal grains here, and these crystal grains. Every grain has an orientation. I try to draw this with these little dots. That's the orientation of the cubic crystal of the atoms inside there. Yeah? And since this is now a conglomerate of, of different grains, yeah? and all grains are oriented somehow. However, inside each grain, the spontaneous magnetism, that's there, yeah? that's are the domains, this is spontaneously magnetized. Yeah? They are uh, in the direction of this grid, of this crystal grid. Uh, this is why I draw only this crystal grid, and these are in this direction. Either in direction or against the direction. And in some, it's complete chaos. Okay, in between, maybe if it's a small corn, then we have only one domain at one, one, one grain. Yeah? If it's a bigger grain, then you have more domains. I have here drawn more domains, and in between we have the domain wall. This is the main wall, and well, it's it, this is discovered by Bloch. Uh, Bloch. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Swiss or American, uh, depends on how you want to see it, Swiss American uh, physician. Uh, yeah, this he discovered how this transition must be from one direction to the other direction and, and it's described a little bit, these walls. And well, that's it. And you can also see that, yeah, you, you can, you can watch those domains in, with, 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 uh, with pictures. Yeah. So th that's there. Spontaneous magnetism with inside domains and these domains are very mixed up. So from outside, we are not seeing anything. And now we we'll make the following. Now we add an outside field. Let's say in this direction. That's an H field. And that's our first step here. First step. Adding an outside field. Magnetic field, of course. Yeah, H. What is happening? What is happening is that those domain walls, they are shifted then. Yeah? But in which direction? They are shifted that the, the, the parts which are more in the direction of this, yeah? they are benefit. They are beneficial. Let's look at that grain. Yeah? We have in the middle, we have a red part, which is going in this direction. This is completely in the wrong direction of this. The green ones, oh, this is a wrong green area, I see, in this direction is the green one, right? The green ones are more like in this direction. So what is actually happening is 
that those walls, those domain walls, are moving, are favorizing now. The green areas and here, or in this case, it's the green area. Let's say if it's always now here, for instance, yeah, this red area goes in this direction. So this is more like in H direction. So this is getting bigger. Here, the red area is getting bigger. Because we are more in this direction and the green areas are getting smaller. So it's really about the direction of the spontaneous magnetizing. Here is the green one again. I will draw this now. I will speed this up because I think actually what is happening, what I try to do is clear. All right, so that, that, that's it. Yeah? The domains, which are, the domain walls are shifting and the domains, which are more like in the direction of the magnetic field, those, those will grow. All right, so uh, moving. of domain walls to favor the areas which point more or rather more into the direction of the outer field. Okay. That's how this looks like. So that's the first step. And now, hopefully I can manage to do it. Oh, I should be almost correct, right? Move a little bit. All right. So what is happening then? Next step. Yeah. Next step, if the outside field is getting stronger again. So I will try to draw this in the same direction, but with a longer arrow. Huh? There, we have now a bigger H field. Mm -hmm. What is happening then is that actually that the magnetism is shifting, okay, is shifting and suddenly we will point with our magnetism in direction of the grid, yeah, which is more into the direction of the outer field. This is really jumping. Yeah, this is really bark. Yeah. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Not all at once. Yeah. Not all at once. Uh, but the, the magnetism suddenly is orienting itself into still along the, the uh, grid. Yeah. Let's imagine it's still along the grid. Yeah. But uh, in direction. Yeah. These are really, really jumps. Yeah. They are discovered by Parkhausen, so they are called Parkhausen jumps. This was a German, French, Swiss, American, Germans. <laughs> this is how I like it. Yeah, this is Parkhausen jumps. Yeah. They are not all at one. Yeah, no, not 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 at the same time.
here a little, there a little, here a little, always small jumps in, in, in each grain. And this is not the only thing which is happening. They, they also tend to move a little bit in direction, in direction of the field. Yeah. There, here. So we are moving a little bit outside. Not completely, but also the orientation is no longer is no longer directly in the crystals, yeah? but m moving a little bit, bending a little bit towards the the outer field here. Okay, these are the Backhausen jumps. Uh, at bigger, they are occur at bigger outer fields. Backhausen. Hmm. Now and now we are maximized. Yeah. The only thing which might happen is that the, those things are a little bit more moving in the direction, getting a little bit longer, but that's it. It's we are maxed out here. Yeah, we are almost maxed out. Here this was going pretty really, pretty really fast. Yeah. Then this is also also these jumps are also there, and then after the jumps were made in all of the grains, nothing much will happen anymore. Yeah. They're getting just bigger. Yeah. Then we are then we are at the maximum. Yeah. But no very high uh, field strength anymore. And what is happening if I turn off the other field? Huh? When turning off the other field, third. Then we only have these green arrows left. Yeah? So we see where, in which direction, it's no longer that ordered, yeah? but also not that chaos from the beginning. We still see the direction where the outer field previously was. Yeah? So there is some remains. Okay, there are some remains. Uh, the inner field now is in direction of the local of the local crystal crystal grid. But still there's still order. There is still because the the you see, in the beginning, where was this? In the beginning, it was just somehow, and now we ordered those. Yeah? So even if we turn off, if we turn off the outer field, this will not go away. This will simply not go away anymore. And this is also what we see when when try to watch this. Yeah? Here I have prepared a little something. So Let's say we are not we are not magnetized in our material, so we are here. Yeah? And then we are starting to magnetize. We are starting and actually this is not really a straight line, a, a smooth line. These are little jumps, 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 because we see all those Parkhausen jumps of the different grains. So actually it's going out little steps here. Yeah? And then at some point in time all Parkhausen jumps are done. Uh, and then nothing much will happen. It will grow. Uh, it is growing, but not not really far. Uh. So we are there. Yeah, we are there. And now we are we are removing our field. Uh. So we are removing this. This is the new curve here. Uh. This is the new curve. And then we are removing our field, we go down and what remains, there are some remains, here, 
there is a remain. Yeah? And this is called remanence. Remanence flux density. The outer field is zero, yeah? but there is still flux density. We have magnetized the material. This is exactly what happened here. Yeah? We are at zero, but there is still orientation. This we can see. If we now put on a, a field in the other direction, then it will look like that. And then we are at a point where we are completely compensating. So the, the, the flux density is zero then, the magnetic flux density. And we need an outer field, field which is compensating this. This field is called coercitive. Field strength. I will spell this No, it's German. Coercitive Feldstärke is in German, and in English it's coercive. Uh -huh. Coercive. I've never written this. Somebody else must have done this. Coercive field strength. Uh -huh. And then actually, in the other direction, it will happen just the same. Uh -huh. So we're going up here. Yeah? And at some point, we are done. This the saturation, this is the field, this is the area of saturation. So here we're going in this direction. Here we're going in this direction. And of course, the material does not really remember or care about directions, right? One is as good as the other. So if we go in then in the other direction, we we'll have we will have here the same, and here also the same. I try so it's symmetrical. I hopefully I can manage to draw the symmetrical. No. <laughs> Should be symmetrical. Huh? And this is in the other direction. It's pretty much the same, but with a different sign. Yeah. And this is the behavior, and this is the root cause and the behavior of a ferromagnetic material. Yeah. This is why there is still magnetism. For instance, here with this, there is no outer field. It's magnetized. There's this ferromagnetic material inside there is magnetized. And so we have here the remanent flux density somewhere inside. Yeah, ferromagnetic materials, and there are different materials which have different shapes of this hysteresis curve. This is called magnetic hysteresis curve. Uh, and yeah, we will talk about this. Yeah, when to use what, but before we have to talk about um, the, the energy. In the electric, in the magnetic field, electric field, magnetic field. We're talking about magnetic field. Energy in the magnetic field. Our next topic in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.